I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading. And you know, if you don't hold it, you don't own it is a huge motto for me, which is why I'm here. Because we at ITM Trading are a full service, physical gold and silver dealer, but really specializing in those custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the reset that frankly it should be pretty apparent to everybody that we're walking through. Although there are some friends that are super quiet. All right. But at any rate, we had a lot of questions that came in. So I'm just going to move forward with answering questions. And the first one is from Scott S. And he asks, how much food storage do you hold? Well, honestly, Scott, everybody's got a different kind of circumstance. When I was living in my little two bedroom condo, getting ready to retire, which obviously I didn't do and I don't have any plans to, but that was one thing. I sold that and I moved into this property. So I'm on a half an acre, removed the grass and began to build out my uh, food production needs. And I have that both outside and inside. So there is a level of storage that I hold primarily in sprouting seeds, particularly broccoli sprouting seeds, because you can rinse it for three days and you have some really good nutrition. But, um, but you have to look, everybody has to look at their circumstance. I would say if you were saying how long should you plan to feed yourself and your family and whoever else you want to feed, I would be looking at three to six months worth of food production or worth of, of food storage. That's what you should have. And I think we all got a kind of a taste of what happened when all the grocery store shelves went bare. If you have the ability to grow your own food, which you can do in a small space as well, just with like a typical, typical uh, shelving unit and a fish tank on the bottom and then trays, you know, you should do it so you always have some fresh food, but basically enough for three to six months. And Tony Blaylock asks, can you do a refresher course on Triffin Dilemma? Now, some of you may not have heard of that. It really has to do with the world reserve currency, which at the moment, technically the US dollar is the world reserve currency. And what that means is if you are a, a government, a corporation, or an individual going outside of your borders to buy anything, oil, lumber, steel, food, whatever it is, you have no choice but to use the reserve currency to do so. And I know that's been changing, but the Triffin Dilemma is the conflict of economic interest that arises between short-term domestic needs and long-term international objectives. And it's one of the reasons why you see, well, in, in the US, but this would have been true at any currency that's the world reserve currency. This is part of the reason that, that uh, world reserve currency countries will typically run deficits because they're basically uh, supporting in some ways the rest of the world. But that's what the Triven Dilemma is. It is the conflict that arises between short-term domestic and long-term international objectives. And Cheryl asks, oh, a tough question. Okay, we are retired and wondered what is the best and safest country to move into? Where would you go if not in Arizona? Well, Cheryl, that is a really uh, tough question. And I don't really have a great answer for it. However, I do know some people that have found Panama to be a better country, but I don't think you can really go anywhere and be immune to this. This is a global economic shift. So, you know, you have to decide that for yourself. You know, I'm here in Arizona because this is really where my parents, when they were still with us, they chose to come and a lot of my siblings and my children do better around their family. So that's why I moved to Arizona. But I also like the fact that we really don't have 
uh, any big natural disaster, disasters, some haboobs, which are big, massive windstorms, and those are bad enough, but we don't get things like earthquakes or hurricanes or things like that here, so I'm more comfortable with that. And we have a 12-month growing season, so that kind of relates to the other question about food. I can grow something all year round. It's a very tough question. I don't know if I answered it adequately, but there you go. And Lloyd Rushkin asks, hi Lynette from Manchester, UK. Hi. Any thoughts on the switch between silver bullion into gold at the moment? Currently sitting on mainly silver bullion. Well, you know, I have a diversified portfolio. But if you were to ask me, well, what's the lion's share of your portfolio in? I, I would have to say without any kind of doubt at all, it's in gold. And I think that, there, look, anything physical, there's a finite amount of it. But gold is the primary currency metal. So, um, and I don't know how much silver you're sitting on, but you definitely need gold because that's what they reset the currency against is against gold. And when I've done studies, which I have, on what happens and how, how both silver and, and uh, gold perform during hyperinflationary events, frankly, gold always outperforms, but I think that that is primarily because it's the metal against which currencies reset. So I don't think I would wait, Lloyd. I mean, you definitely want silver as well, uh, but you want to look at that for your day-to-day -day functioning. And if you've got way too much silver, just go ahead and convert. Uh, I, if I were you, you do what you're comfortable with, but I would definitely be converting some into gold because you've got to have a position in gold. And I wouldn't be waiting because that's what the central bankers are gobbling up just as quickly as they can. And Johnny number five asks, what's your advice about platinum? It's 20 times rarer than gold and two times cheaper. And that was not always, I mean, the rarity factor was there, but uh, two times cheaper was not always the factor. It was not always the way it was. In fact, platinum used to be a lot more expensive than gold in terms of fiat. But platinum is an industrial metal. It's not a monetary metal. This is a financial system reset as well. It, I mean, it's a social, economic, and financial system reset. And therefore, you know, while I do own some platinum, I own that primarily probably in jewelry form because platinum is um, a rare metal and it is a precious metal, but it's not a monetary metal. So I focus on the monetary system. And that would be it for the moment. So, okay, well, I'll do one more. Okay, uh, World Concepts and Beliefs asks, what are your thoughts on having the rich man's Roth which is a high cash value life insurance policy. Hmm. Well, a Roth IRA, uh, you know, I've got to tell you world concepts. I'm not sure. Uh, when I think about a Roth, I think about it as an IRA, um, not as a high cash value life insurance policy. But what I can tell you is that any policy is a contract and any contract is only as good as the counterparty to that contract. And if you actually read any of those contracts, then what you'll see all over the place is that it's based upon the claims paying ability of the insurance company. And what you probably wouldn't see on face value, but if you're sitting with an insurance policy, you know, life insurance, I'm not exactly sure exactly what kind of insurance product you're looking at, but if it is a whole life with cash value, you need to look at 
how the insurance company is investing their money. And a lot of them have, again, you know, look, we've had zero interest rate policy for going on 10 years now. At 12 years, what am I saying? 10 years, 12 years. And so that has forced a lot of these companies that have promised defined benefits to go out on the risk spectrum and they do a lot of work with derivatives in an attempt to generate enough income to pay these policies. So I am not at this point in time, this has not always been true, maybe it won't always be true in the future, but at this point in time, I have term life so it's specifically because of my children, otherwise I wouldn't even have that. But my insurance policy is physical gold and silver in my possession, which, you know, I mean, because even any kind of policy, what are you converting it into? Converting it into fiat money. And, you know, last time I checked, a trillion times zero is still zero. So that's what I think about any kind of, life insurance policy really is just a contract. So uh, last week I did as good as gold with Brian and Daryl. And I, and I think that was probably the best interview that I've done with them. A lot, we covered so much stuff, really great questions. You don't want to miss that. That's up on our socials, isn't it? It's already up on the socials. And uh, this week I, we am with Dustin Nemos, it's actually tomorrow because I'm recording this today, but he is my favorite millennial. We have a lot to talk about, and I know I always get a lot out of those interviews, so I don't think this one's going to be any different. Next week, I'm going to be on with Mike at Rethinking the Dollar, and I've done that one before as well, and he's, he's a great interviewer, so I know that's going to be good. We've got a pretty nice roster coming up. But if you have any questions about this or anything else, just go ahead and send them in to questions at itmtrading.com. And you know, the, another alternative, if you're talking, if you're working with one of our consultants and you have a question, just give them the question, they'll send it in to me and we're gonna start doing a piece where it's just uh, client supplied questions from the consultants. So that's another way to get it. But if you want to talk to one of us, just click that Calendly link below, set up a time to meet with your consultant. And if the times are not available, call us 888-696-4653 because we love human contact and we'll set a time that works for you. Of course, this and all the other videos we do are also posted on Facebook as well as Brighty on. And if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, just go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. And we'll let you know when we're posting a new video. But keep in mind that it is totally time to cover your assets. We do that here with the Wealth Shield. And a component of that, a large component, is physical gold, physical silver out of the system. You hold it. You own it. It does not run any counterparty risk. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.